Our, our next guest. Oh, my God. Damn it, Liz! <laughs> our next guest uh, still, still has not introduced me to Carl Castle, so I don't know what the point of this has been. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Sagel. First of all, what bullshit is this? They promised me a star field. I had like five minutes of making the jump to hyperspace jokes for you guys. Nothing. Terrible. I just want to say this about David Rees. I don't know exactly what it is that he does, but whatever it is, he's really good at it. I have, um, and I really like it. I still have no idea, but it's great. Quick, let's make the jump to hyperspace. So, uh, CGI now. It's cool. So, um, anyway, I've had, to, I've, I've, I've had this great time and on this uh, ship, and uh, I have, it's a ship, it's not a boat, goddammit. And uh, I have met many of you, and uh, I've gotten to know you a little bit, and I know some of you have a question, which you're too nice to say. What exactly is he doing here? <laughs> he does not play an instrument or sing. He is not a stand-up comedian of great talent. He is not an acclaimed actor and writer and star of a beloved uh, seminal 1980s and 90s science fiction TV show, so what exactly is the point of his being here? What are you doing here? Thank you. And so I thought in keeping with your general show of culture, I would give you my origin story as it pertains to this crew. Eventually, I'm going to retcon myself, and I will be taller. <laughs> Some years ago, about five or six years ago, the um, New York Times Magazine was printing these very amusing first-person stories called True Life Tales at the front of the book, as they say in the magazine trade. And many of them were by very talented writers, such as Jonathan Volstein, Charlie Kine, and others associated with the fabulous public radio show, This American Life. <laughs> and, um... A uh, member of my staff on my radio show, wait, wait, don't tell me, said to me, quote, you're not going to let them take all the glory, are you? So, I sat down and I crafted, wrote is inadequate a word, I crafted out of, out of the, in the uncreated smithy of, no, wait a minute, in the smithy of my soul, the uncreated conscience of my race, I crafted a brilliant, touching, first-person narrative about an amusing and, I thought, touching incident from my childhood. And I submitted it to the editor of said page, and the editor said to me very graciously, sorry, we don't do childhood memoirs. And I was crushed. But Mr. Hodgman was very nice about it <laughs> and encouraged me to try again, because this you may not know before he was horribly disfigured by his own force beams. <laughs> and became <laughs> the widely known minor television celebrity that you know and love to this day. John was uh, an editor, a literary agent, and an extremely talented uh, cultural journalist, in fact, uh, who I admired. Uh, and he did encourage me to uh, submit some more pieces, and I did, and uh, ended up publishing about six of them. And that was a great thing for me to do. And because I got to know him, become friends with John, John came through town doing a reading of one of his fabulously funny books. And I went to see his show. And afterwards, I went to see his friend, Jonathan Colton, play. And he played First of May, which I thought was really funny. And then he played uh, Read Your Brains, which I thought was even funnier. And then he played The Future Soon, 
And I said to myself, how did he know? <laughs> and so I got to be friends with Mr. Colton and went to see him in concert and got to meet his opening act, Paul and Storm. Yeah. And we got friends with them and they invited me to come to a show at Woodstock. And then I did a show with Paul Storm in Chicago in November, and now I am on this boat. <laughs> Experiencing a perpetual hangover and motion sickness. <laughs> and because of this strange concatenation of events, I now own a bird feeder made out of a coconut. And it may well be that the entire purpose of this strange series of events was to get that bird feeder made out of a coconut into my home. And just before it gets there, the Vogons will come and blow everything up. And the monster start over. So anyway, given I have no musical talent, uh, given I am not a stand-up comedian, given that Carl Castle is thousands of miles away. I know, I feel, it's weird to be on stage with that. What I thought I would do is actually perform some of these pieces as written for the New York Times Magazine and edited by Mr. Hodgman for your amusement. 